This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Leading the youngest republic in the world, she sees national independence and joint endeavor as the prerequisites for a country's development. Coming from a developing island country, she appreciates China's cooperation approach toward equality, respect, and mutual benefits. To fight against global income gaps, she calls for reforms to build a better world. In this episode of Leaders Talk, we meet Mia Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados. Welcome to Leaders Talk, where we meet leaders, thinkers, and trailblazers. I'm Zhou Yun. The island nation of Barbados is located at the confluence of the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. In November of 2021, the nation has chosen to follow its own development path and establish the youngest republic in modern times. It is also among the very first English-speaking Caribbean country to have established diplomatic relations with China. And our guest today is Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Mosley. So, what are her expectations of this China trip? How does she see the potential for cooperation between the two countries? And what's her vision on the new impetus injected into the entire Caribbean region by the sound development of bilateral relations? Let's hear what she has to say. Barbados is an island country located in the Lesser Antilles. It's the most easterly of the Caribbean islands. Barbados is an island composed of limestone, mainly formed by coral reefs. With glorious sunlight, lucid waters, and whitey soft sand, it boasts over 200 scenic beaches, where visitors can marvel at the ultimate magic and charm of nature. <laughs> Yet this beautiful land has emerged from a series of ordeals. Having thrown off the yoke of Spain, Portugal, and the United Kingdom, Barbados gained independence in 1966, and on November 30th, 2021, it chose to adopt republicanism at its 55th birthday, thus making it the youngest republic in the world. Prime Minister Motley, thank you so much for joining us today on Leaders Talk. You've paid official visit to China in 2004 and 2007. So, what kind of developments here in China have you been following since then, and what are your expectations of your trip this time?、Um, first of all, thank you for having me on this panel, this interview rather. I came 15 years ago on the last occasion.、Um, this trip, I haven't had a chance to move around a lot, but clearly the changes in Beijing. Are palpable. When I was last here, I remember seeing many, many, many cranes, and it was like a huge construction site.、Mm -hmm. um, this time, I see many, many, many buildings and many, many people moving, and obviously, much has happened in that period of time.、Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that China's growth has continued to fuel the global economy.、Um, we speak now after a difficult period for all of us, but even against that backdrop. Um, what we're beginning to see as signs of growth again is promising.、Uh, we hope that the opportunities for the development of both the Chinese people and other people who work with and trade with you will be able to continue apace. But we are conscious that we face in today's world many challenges、mm -hmm. um, that unite us in common purpose:、um, the challenge of climate, which.、Um, This week, you here are facing some of your hottest temperatures ever.、Mm -hmm. Similarly, my own country and the region in which you find Barbados and the Caribbean Sea, we've had tropical storms last week with other systems coming off the coast of Africa.、Mm -hmm. um, similarly, we see in the United States of America the consequences of the wildfire,、um, wildfires in Canada,、mm -hmm. impacting the smog. Um, that you found in New York City and Washington D.C., and therefore it will moderate、mm -hmm. um, what we can effectively do, because our first obligation is to protect people, as your country has done well. In recent years, you have made your voice and concerns heard very loud on the world stage about the、um, 
solidarity and also the urgency to address the issue of climate change. Is this because you are the prime minister of an island nation that is surrounded by a vast area of, um, you know, marine space, which is about 30 times of your land area? That is why you have been always on the uh, forefront of this issue. Well, there's no doubt that small island developing states are on the front line mm -hmm. of these difficulties. Um, we like to say that we have been the canaries in the mine. And regrettably, had people listened to our concerns earlier, we might have seen quicker action. Um, we're now seeing countries between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn um, predominantly affected, and this constitutes probably about 40% of the world's population. Um, the big issue for us, of course, is will we have sufficient time to do and to protect as many people and as many of our institutions and as much of our country as possible from the ravages of it. For us as a small island developing state, I refer to the floods and the hurricanes as the chronic NCDs, the big events of the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. But the more insidious events, the ones that are attacking us daily, are the water shortages. And those are compounded very often by drought. And then, of course, the presence of sargassum seaweed, which comes on our shores in huge, huge, huge amounts. Overnight, you can have three, four feet of sargassum seaweed piling up. And with its pungent smell, um, it makes it difficult for people to conduct business mm -hmm. or to recreate on the beaches, which, as you would realize, would have a negative impact on tourism economies. Mm -hmm. So across multiple fronts, as a small island developing state, mm -hmm. we face these realities. The most obvious example of it with respect to our marine resources right. is the destruction of coral reefs. Mm -hmm. And there is a perspective that within 30 years, if we don't check our behavior, the planet can see most of the coral reefs on the planet destroyed. Just as the old Barbadians goes, um, one one blow does kill one old cow. So any you, trivial you, changes, exactly. I did my homework. <laughs> so any trivial changes could really sometimes make a catastrophic impact to the climate exactly. change, right? Exactly. And, and what we're seeing across the world, regrettably, are climate migrants. Mm -hmm. What is demanded of us is the coordinated action to protect the planet, to protect the biodiversity, to see how we're going to use what we have. Um, we like to refer to Barbados as not only a small island developing state, but a large ocean state. Right. You referred to our ocean jurisdiction just now, mm -hmm. being 430 times the size of our land. And therefore, we're conscious that we have an obligation that goes beyond what our land size would otherwise reflect. Mm -hmm. And that obligation is to recognize that oceans really will be the next frontier in the protection of the planet. Prime Minister Motley, you share a very special bond with China because your birthday is October the 1st, and that coincides with China's national holiday. And that is why you have once said that among all the countries in the world, China will be the very last one to forget. So <laughs> what does this very um, interesting coincidence mean to you? Well, as you just said, it, it causes me to reflect on what it means to be able to celebrate birth. Um, your country has taken a very deliberate course in its modern incarnation. You have a civilization that is revered across the world mm -hmm. for its ancient and complex nature. And yet you have been that civilization that has literally used ancient precepts to remake itself to meet a modern world. And that in and of itself is a lesson to us all. Fortunately for you, a lot of what you have has been preserved, which is also a benefit that we, we, we should revere. I was just reading a letter in your papers today mm -hmm. where the person was reflecting on the fact that one of the most important things is the ability to teach the sayings, ancient sayings to our young people to help give them the tools to be able to manage each and every crisis and each and every opportunity in today's world. Right. And it's something that finds resonance with me mm -hmm. because in my own communication with my own people in Barbados, one of the things that I try to do is to use sayings, proverbs, mm -hmm. because more often than not, these proverbs have wisdom. Right. And it is the way in which we can communicate from generation to generation mm -hmm the things that are important or that may help us navigate our way 
through each and every one of these um, of, of the daily actions that is required of us. The Confucian approach mm -hmm. is one that has therefore guided your people. Right. And really within each civilization is that body of knowledge. 46 years, that's how long both countries have established diplomatic relations, have enjoyed this very sound and uh, long-lasting friendship. So what keywords would you use to characterize these bilateral relations? And what is your vision on the bilateral tie moving forward? Well, to begin with, that our relationship was first started in an act of courage. We felt as a nation that the Chinese civilization and the Chinese people were, were worthy of our respect. And we were able, therefore, to meet with you in a respectful way, respecting each other's sovereignty. Um, and therefore, respect, tolerance, courage, those are the words, solidarity, mm -hmm. that, that come to mind when I think about our relationship. Right. Um, that friendship has endured across almost five decades. Mm -hmm. um, I smile because I was merely 11 years old when that relationship started. And I find myself now, many decades later, expressing the same appreciation and wanting to reflect the same mutual respect. But the commitment to seeing people and to putting people first in all that we do has been a driver in our relationship. The treatment that your country has reflected in how it treats to large and small nations is also worthy of respect. For small nations, that matters. Mm -hmm. Because in too many things globally, we are told that we either don't have enough power mm -hmm. or enough to be able to command market attention. Particularly when I give you the example of during COVID, when some could get and some couldn't get, the majority who could not get were small nations because what we needed was too small to command market size. And what we saw were large countries imposing export restrictions and making it difficult for other countries to access critical pieces of equipment that were thought to have been needed at the time. Mm -hmm. So I want to salute the way in which your country has always seen small states and worked in a respectful way with them to be able to achieve common objectives of development. Prime Minister Motley, just as you mentioned, that through all those years, both countries have weathered many challenges together. During the COVID-19 pandemic, China sent 30,000 vaccines to Barbados, and you personally went to the airport to receive those vaccines. And also since 2016, every 10 out of 100 Barbados have received medical services from Chinese medical teams. So given those challenges and also much more unprecedented challenges facing the world. How do you understand the significance of the idea of a community of shared future for mankind, as well as the Global uh, Development Initiative, the Global Security Initiative, and the Global uh, Civilization Initiative proposed by President Xi? Well, I think all of those come together to be able to speak to the same precepts of mutual respect to which I just spoke, mm -hmm. and also the common humanity which we share. We don't all look like each other, we don't all sound like each other, right. but we need to respect each other as human beings. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the key precepts that I think that the initiatives which President Xi and your government have tried to be able to propose to the rest of the world as a potential route for development are worthy of our consideration and reflective of our values. If the world attempts to be made in one space or one shape, it may not necessarily be successful because people just have different views and different perspectives and that diversity must reflect respect. China is now one of the major trading partners for Barbados and this um, enhancing economic ties has also made it possible for Chinese consumers here to taste the uh, Barbadian's delight such as um, high quality rum. So what are some of the other products you want to introduce here to the vast Chinese market? We're a small nation, so there are not a lot of products that we have. Um, rum certainly is one of them, and we like to believe that we make the best rum in the world. Pro you said that proudly, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say so proudly. Mm -hmm. And of course, we would like to see more and more Chinese tourists come. We remove visa requirements some years now, and, but we'd like to see a lot more come, not just only for land-based tourism, but also to do business 
or indeed to do cruise tourism. Um, having said that, mm -hmm. I really do feel that the area for growth is going to be in the area of the protection and equally the economic utilization of the resources of the marine environment. And that, By that, that you mean blue economy? The blue economy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is going to be where our two countries perhaps will see the greatest level of cooperation going forward. In recent years, China and Barbados have been expanding bilateral pragmatic cooperation in extensive fields including trade, agriculture and energy, with fruitful results coming out. On March 28, 2023, a groundbreaking ceremony was held for the China Aid Center for Food Security and Entrepreneurship Project in Barbados. With the main buildings taking shape, it is expected that this project will help alleviate Barbados' heavy dependence on imports of food and vegetables. This um, Center for Food Security and Entrepreneurship Project will definitely assist Barbados to help us in our agricultural sector so that we'll be able to adequately feed our people here in Barbados. In August 2020, a Chinese car company delivered the first fleet of electric buses to Barbados, opening up an exciting new chapter in the country's efforts to tackle climate change and achieve its goal of carbon neutrality by 2030. The buses come equipped with wheelchair accessibility, Wi-Fi and more, promising a quiet, comfortable and emissions-free ride. Get back to bilateral relations. In 2019, Barbados signed an MOU with China on cooperation under the Belt and Road Initiative. And since then, we are seeing so many concrete outcomes. And as you know, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the BRI. So what are your thoughts on the high quality building of this uh, initiative? Um, since the signing of the Belt and Road Initiative, we've been working on the tangible project of reconstructing many of our roads in the Scotland district. Um, the majority of Barbados is actually um, on a coral limestone, but one seventh of the island is oceanic upsurge, which is clay, and therefore is subject to a lot of erosion and movement. Mm -hmm. We have entered an agreement with your government to be able to stabilize many of the roads in that section. So we will continue to work positively with respect to the Belt and Road Initiative. We appreciate the wisdom mm -hmm. of, uh, of it. When I spoke to President Xi before, I indicated that we thought that it was perfect in terms of being able to maintain the connectivity mm -hmm. and to create opportunities for countries globally. Um, I genuinely believe that the world is a better place if it comes together to work together. Mm -hmm. And I say all the time, many hands make light work. Um, and when others have confronted me about the extent to which we are exposed to Chinese loans and why we mustn't do this and mustn't do that. Mm -hmm. I've had occasion to say, please, please, let us stop. China has been a strong development partner of Barbados. Um, when we became an independent nation, mm -hmm. our Prime Minister at the time in his first address to the United Nations indicated that we shall be friends of all satellites of none. That is why we had the courage to establish diplomatic relations with China when we did in 1977. Mm -hmm. That is why we had the courage to establish diplomatic relations with Cuba. And that is why we continue also to speak out in support of Venezuela. It is how we live and how we have lived under successive governments from different political parties. So it tells you that it is part of the national psyche of the country. You have met with, uh, or you have talked with President Xi before. So what is your impression of uh, President Xi? I think that President Xi is uh, one of the world leaders who has made it clear that we have to have an approach to development that sees and reflects all nations. And I think that that is an important conversation. And I can say clearly to you that our relationship with China, our relationship with President Xi has been one that has caused us very much great pride and as you know here in China when I spoke to President Xi on the last occasion one of the things I congratulated him for mm -hmm. was the elimination of extreme poverty right. in China. Until we can move all of our people out of poverty we have work to be done. The problem is is that we are at risk of seeing the pauperization of countries, countries going back into poverty because of these global crises that we are facing. We need to have a longer horizon 
and perhaps there is no nation in the world that can teach us more about the length of horizon, more so than your nation, who has always taken the long view to development. Mm -hmm. um, and at a time when the world is so consumed by instantaneous gratification mm -hmm. and instantaneous communication, one of the benefits of your civilization and your development has been to remind us that the long view is what matters. China Media Group had signed an MOU with Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation yesterday, which is expected to open a new chapter for media cooperation and beyond. You were there yesterday to uh, witness the entire signing process. So what is your vision on the promotion of cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries? I, I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. our country entertains on an annual basis about five times its population between land base and cruise visitors. It is important to build tolerance for our people to be exposed to as many cultures as possible. People in my country can see more about how you express yourself and what is reflected in your television stations and for vice versa. For you to see how Barbadians live and how Barbadians express themselves is priceless because you will never be able to have all of China come to Barbados and we will never be able to have all of Barbados come to China. Mm -hmm. But by that daily exposure with the movement of information, we can have a greater appreciation of each other's cultures mm -hmm. and be able to influence each other's in ways known and unknown. Well, speaking of tourism, as you just said, that Barbados are now seeing more arrivals from China. And I think our viewers, they are eager to know this boundless charm of uh, Barbados. So, Prime Minister Motley, why not take this opportunity and to give us a better idea about the beauty of your country? I think you have to come and see it to believe it. <laughs> Seeing uh, is believing, right? Very few people expect the range of experiences with respect to the visit to the island that they will get. Um, some who come and say, oh, they expect the island to be flat, flat, flat. And then they're surprised when they go on the East Coast and see the oceanic upsurge and the hills. And so it's just not sunshine or beaches. No, no it goes and beyond then, that. And then on one side of the island, the sea is very calm and, and very much idyllic in the Caribbean sense of the right. way that, that people expect. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the island, it's majestic and the ocean is powerful and turbulent. And there's nothing between there and Africa. So that I think that it is special that we have been able in such a small spa package mm -hmm. to reflect just that level of geographical diversity to keep you excited mm -hmm. and not bored. And I look forward to welcoming you and many, many more there. Well, in 2021, Barbados made its transition into a republic. At that time, Prime Minister Mali, there are different interpretations and voices about this move. So to you, how significant it is for Barbados to take this step? And also, what are some of the major changes happening to the country since then? Becoming a republic is about finishing the process of independence. Mm -hmm. This journey started with the emancipation of slaves. That's the 19th century. That's 1838. It continued with the enfranchisement of women being able to give, be given the right to vote in 1944. And it then continued with the formal act of cutting ties with the United Kingdom in the Act of Independence in 1966. We have continued it with the removal of the Privy Council, the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, um, not having them be our final Court of Appeal and having them replaced by a Caribbean Court of Justice. And we did that in 2005. It is continued with the step to have the Queen removed as our head of state. The notion that the head of state of Barbados should be someone who is not born in Barbados and who has no day-to-day -day relationship with the country was no longer acceptable to our people. And similarly, any nation state that does not have its citizens actively building to protect and nurture the quality of life and the institutions and the values will eventually start to decline. So for us, this is much more than just the removal of the head of state. Mm -hmm. This is about, with purpose, going about the business of nation building and moving into the next phase of independence. 
and regrettably because Barbados was one of those first colonies that the British used to establish its dominance in the New World, it was also one of the first colonies that would have reflected the institution of racism as a formal institution mm -hmm. to create first and second class citizens. And that is what becoming a republic more than anything else is about. The dismantling of the other things that literally have hindered the full blossoming of our nation and our people. Prime Minister Smartly, you entered politics in your 20s and at the age of 29, you became one of the youngest Barbadians to be assigned a ministerial portfolio and then worked your way to the heights so became the country's very first female prime minister. And you once made a very interesting comparison that uh, running a government is like running a family household. So how are they similar and what has been the source of your inspiration? To work every day to make people sleep easier. If people can sleep easier each night, mm -hmm. then it means that they have the capacity to help come to the task of lifting the weight that's necessary to move the country forward to the next level. Mm -hmm. And by extension, we are working to remove the injustices of the world that are foisted both at the individual level, the institutional level, the national level, the international level. And this requires um, a level of alertness and discernment because very often the battles come in different shapes. Mm -hmm. And very often the system which we function in still reflects too much of an old imperial order, an old colonial order. Um, the United Nations was created at a time when there were only 50 countries mm -hmm. signing. Today there are 193. Um, the Bretton Woods institutions were not reflective of us or our interests or our participation formally in the governance of it. So mm -hmm. improving people's lives and fighting injustice are at the core of the things that keep me working every day. After this interview, you're going to take a high-speed train to Tianjin yes. to attend the annual meeting of the World Champion a World Economic Forum. What would be your key message there? That this world has to work together to fight the many great crises that there are too many countries and people being left on the margins at a time when the world has had more than it has ever had. It is leaving too many people on the side wanting. And I believe that the role and voice of those of us who have a strong conscience is needed to ensure that the market does not determine only that victors can live well, but that we use the leveling hand of the state and the international community, the multilateral institutions, to bring as many people to development, to allow them to protect themselves mm -hmm. against the multiple challenges that we face in today's world. Okay, Prime Minister Motley, it was a great pleasure talking to you today, and thank you so much for sharing with us your very insightful views, your ideas, and your experiences. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. The next time we speak will be in Barbados next to the ocean. That's the deal. Thank you. <laughs> thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Greatly appreciated. During the interview, Prime Minister Motley expressed her belief that China and Barbados have always been good friends and partners. And just as the old Chinese saying goes, close together or miles apart, distance means little when we are heart to heart. It is believed that in the future, more efforts will be made to promote the bilateral relations and build a closer community of shared future between China and Barbados. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zhou Yun, reporting from Beijing. Many thanks for watching. See you next time.